Martin, how are you? What's going on, pal? Ernest T. You're not here in favor of the police race. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah. If we can get everyone to take their seats, we're a few minutes behind, but we'll start. Uh, call to order the public hearing with respect to a proposed intermunicipal agreement with the City of Waterbury and the Borough of Naugatuck for the sharing of taxes and the development of properties in Naugatuck and Waterbury, as submitted by Attorney Jean Perry Phillips, Pullman and Comley. Uh, anyone who wishes to address the board with respect to the intermunicipal agreement, please make sure you sign up with the City Sheriff. Please state your name and address for the record. And there's a five minute limit. I will give you a one minute heads up. Mr. Sheriff, if you call the first speaker. First speaker tonight from 112 Concord Street, Thomas Pelletier. Good evening, Thomas Pelletier, 112 Concord Street. I'm up here tonight to ask that you support this uh, initiative. Um, quite frankly, I think it puts us on the map yet again. Uh, this is what collaboration does working with, uh, in this agreement, Naugatuck and Waterbury. I got to commend the mayor and his staff. This is what happens when you get people into a room working together. Um, I think it's going to be uh, detrimental and uh, a great thing for both the town of Naugatuck and the city of Waterbury, not only on tax revenue, but a model that if we could all work together. Uh, there are savings, not only to the taxpayers, but great things that could come. And I hope that other, uh, you know, uh, cities and towns and the state take what we're doing here tonight and maybe might be able to do what we're doing here. Um, I think if there's more of this um, that comes about, not only in the state, but here in the city of Waterbury, not only is it going to save the state money, it's going to save the city money, it's going to save a lot of people money. So I got to commend the mayor, uh, his staff, and uh, everybody from Naugatuck and um, everywhere else that was involved in this. And uh, it's just another one for the city of Waterbury and Naugatuck. Thank you. That's the last speaker tonight, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, with that, it being 7 o'clock, we'll close the public hearing and call to order the regular meeting of the uh, Board of Aldermen for Monday, November 19th, 2018. I would first like to begin, before we get to the, the pledge and the prayer, just to welcome our newest member, Belinda Weaver, who's joining us for our first meeting this evening. So welcome. and. <laughs> And I would ask uh, this evening when we stand for the uh, silent prayer that we keep in our thoughts and our prayers Sam Beeman and his family. Sam was um, a, a helicopter pilot in Vietnam, a police officer here in the city for a long time, and most recently the head of our Veterans Memorial Committee. They don't make people like Sam anymore, and we truly have lost one of the good ones um, recently, and it's very sad for the city of Waterbury. And I'd also ask that you keep in your prayers the victims and they're expanding this week of the various shootings that we've had at the synagogue and the nightclub and the supermarket, and also uh, in California, all of those who have lost uh, their families, their loved ones, and their property to the fires that are going on. So with that, if we would all please uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and a silent prayer. Pledge of Allegiance. Alderman Bernalli. Here. Alderwoman Cavallo. Here. Alderwoman Cotto. Alderman DiGiovan Carlo. Here. Alderman Dorso. Here. Alderman Giacomi. Here. Alderman Kula. Here. Alderman Lopez. Here. Alderman Matthews. Present. Alderwoman Martinez McCarthy. Here. Alderman Napoli. Here. Alderman Nujame. Present. Alderman Sherman. Here. 
First time, Alderman, Alderwoman Belinda Weaver. And Alderman Pernaruski. Here. 14 present, one absent. Thank you. Um, we have a quorum. With that, we'll go to, um, we actually have a presentation scheduled this evening, but we're going to take that up as a committee of the whole, so we're going to uh, dispense with the presentation at this point. We'll take it up in a minute. The next item would be public speaking. Anyone who wishes to address the board, please sign up with the city sheriff. Uh, again, please state your name and address for the record. There's a five-minute limit. I'll give you a one-minute heads up. Mr. Sheriff. First speaker tonight from 112 Concord Street, Thomas Pelletier. Thomas Pelletier, 112 Concord Street. Uh, in your agenda tonight, item number 10, uh, the Waterbury Police Department uh, contract. I would ask that you guys pass this, and uh, let me explain why. Um, this agreement, um, it was a long agreement, but both parties came together, the city, the police department. Um, this saved the city a lot of money um, with possibly having to go to arbitration. And um, the both sides uh, understand uh, the need on both sides. But we need to do what's right for our officers today in a time when uh, our police officers are put on the line, not only on TV, but on the line every day. We just see tonight uh, another uh, police, uh, police shooting uh, in Chicago. Uh, three officers are in critical condition. Uh, they believe that they had uh, shot the perpetrator that started the, um, the, the shooting. Uh, this is what our officers are facing out there every single day. Um, you know, it's a job, unfortunately, today, I think, uh, with being in the news on an everyday basis, people don't get to see the positives that our police officers do every day. They always see the negative perception against our police officers. Um, I would ask that you support this contract. It's a five-year contract. Um, there are incredible savings on both sides. And uh, yet again, it shows our committed support to our men and women in blue. Um, you know, me and many others on the silent majority that support our uh, officers, uh, we're going to need to do more not only uh, just contractually, but more to support our officers on an everyday basis. Um, secondly, I would also like to welcome our newest alderman. Um, I, if there's anything I could do, I'm a park commissioner, anything I could do to help you out with anything, I know our caucus uh, is going to do everything we can to help you out in the transition, and I think you're going to do an excellent job, so I want to commend you on taking on this task and helping us. And <laughs> lastly, I just would hope in this holiday season, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and invite anybody that can. Um, the mayor has brought Christmas back down to the green. He has crushed the Grinch, in my opinion. Um, I would invite anybody that can come down uh, November 25th, I believe it is. And um, it's, it's just a great event and to see the many new beginnings uh, coming in the downtown. I think it's a great thing. So I would just like to wish everybody a happy holiday and have a safe, happy holiday. Mr. President, that's the last speaker tonight. Thank you. Um, with that, the next item of business would be the approval of the minutes for the regular meeting of Monday, October 22nd, 2018. Is there a motion? Motion approve the minutes of the regular meeting on Monday, October 22nd, 2018. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Bernelli, second by Alderman Napoli. Are there any changes to the minutes proposed? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries. The minutes are approved. Um, the next item would be the mayor's report. So, Mr. Grinch Smasher, if you want to come up and uh, <laughs> tell us how you did it. <laughs> Am I the Grinch? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I want to, first of all, welcome Alderwoman Belinda Weaver here tonight. I also want to 
thank all of you. Uh, Thanksgiving is my favorite time of year. Um, certainly, uh, we're going as a country and as a city. We've had some tremendous uh, events and losses, uh, uh, but I hope everyone has a chance to enjoy their families and, and relax a little bit over the next few days. I also want to congratulate uh, Alderman Napoli uh, for his uh, victory in the election. But I also want to congratulate Alderman Minority Leader uh, Steve Jacomi for running a a good campaign. You know, the um, 73rd District is is uh, so important to this city of Waterbury in so many ways. You know, when you see a turnout the way that we saw in that district this past election, you know that both candidates were very worthy of it. So I, I commend uh, both of you for your commitment to public service. Tonight, uh, we've got two important things uh, that I want to talk to you about just for a few minutes. The first one is the police contract. We have Attorney uh, Parasat and Attorney McNamara here from the city side, and we have interim uh, police chief Fred Spagnolo here representing the police department. Um, you know, this has been a, a negotiation that's been going well over a year. I, I do want to commend uh, Chief Spagnolo and his staff uh, in working uh, diligently with uh, our management team and the union to uh, come up with an agreement that I think is very fair to the city. And you'll hear the details of it uh, from the two attorneys uh, when they come up to speak. But it's, uh, it, I think my quote in the paper is it's a win-win. It's a win-win for the uh, police officers as it uh, compensates them appropriately for the unbelievable job that they do. And it's a win-win for the city uh, fiscally, um, especially in the area of health care uh, <clears throat> healthcare costs and, and insurance. So um, uh, you'll hear from them also tonight. Um, you will be hearing from Attorney Gary O'Connor, who was here with uh, John Mylone from Mylone and McBroom on the, uh, the Naugatuck, uh, Waterbury Naugatuck Industrial Park uh, piece. I'm really proud of this piece uh, for a lot of reasons, uh, but mostly because it's been a um, a huge piece of property in the South End that has been sitting there uh, forever. And uh, it was going to be a dog track, a horse track, a casino, uh, and all the above. And every time folks went to look at it a little bit more deeply, they realized that the access off of uh, Baldwin Street or South Main Street would make it uh, just impossible uh, to develop. Um, I want to. Um, I'll tell you how this unfolded. Uh, we went down to see the piece. We pulled into a cul-de-sac. There was a piece of property there. I called uh, newly elected uh, Mayor Pete Hess. Uh, we, we sat together. We have got aerial maps. We sent uh, Milo and McBroom down there to study the piece. Uh, we uh, were able to negotiate um, um, a joint purchase of a piece of property. Uh, from a private uh, owner uh, to get access to the property through the cul-de-sac instead of South Bain or Baldwin Street. Um, we did, uh, we were able to make that purchase, which of course you're familiar with, which now opens up uh, the land. And uh, to keep in mind, one of the things we're most excited about with this piece is we could either, uh, there's two plans that have been put together. One is to break the piece up into nine separate lots uh, in the industrial park, um, which is very exciting in itself. And then another plan is to keep it up as one piece. And then uh, the, according to uh, the studies that have been done on the property, can actually fit a, a, a building 850,000 square feet to a million square feet. Uh, it could be a distribution center. It could be a lot of things. So we have those two options and hopefully if you agree and we get your approval, we can market the piece immediately. I think it's going to bring back huge dividends. One of the biggest wins in this piece, in addition to what I've already described, is we went up to uh, a State of Connecticut Department of Economic Development with a PowerPoint presentation uh, and requested a $2 million grant uh, so that we could run the utilities into the property uh, at no cost to the taxpayers of Waterbury. Uh, Governor Malloy and uh, Commissioner Smith agreed with us, and uh, the city did receive that grant. 
uh, that will pay for the road, the, uh, the underground utilities, which will include sewer, water, gas, and electricity. And so this is a very viable piece of property. And I think what attracted the DECD and the governor to it is that it was a joint effort, a collaborative effort between the city of Waterbury and, of course, the borough of Naugatuck. Uh, and lastly, on the Grinch piece, uh, I do think it's worthy to mention uh, the new Christmas tree on the green. Uh, this tree was donated by the Longo family. The Longo family owns United Auto Sales on Congress Avenue. Uh, Charlie Longo uh, called me and said that the, he and his brother Joseph and his younger brother Peter uh, wanted to donate the tree in memory of their uh, mother and father, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Longo, uh, both of which were very, very, very close friends with my mother and father. And um, I'm very proud of the Longo family for stepping up, and, and the, green, uh, the green looks a lot better with the Christmas tree on it, by the way. And it's a beautiful tree. It came all the way up from uh, Pennsylvania. So that's my spiel. Thank you all. Thanks for your service. I wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. Okay? Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> With that, um, I would at this point entertain a motion uh, to move new business item number 10, old business item number 1, and old business item number 3 to refer them to the Committee of the Whole. So moved. Second. Made by Alderman Brunelli, seconded by Alderman Napoli. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries. And with that, I would entertain a motion that we resolve ourselves in the Committee of the Whole to deal with new business item number 10 and old business items number 1 and 3. So move. Second. Made by Alderman Brunelli, seconded by Alderman Napoli. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries. We are now a Committee of the Whole. And with that, we'll take up new business item number 10. <coughs> Alderman DG. It's going to be. Mr. President, could I just recuse myself, please? Yep. So we'll send someone to get you when we're done with this. Um, that attorney Parasot, right. how are Good you? Evening. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, I'm attorney Tom Parasot. I'm here with attorney Connor McNamara. We practice with Secor Cassidy in the Portland here in Waterbury, and we're here tonight to present to you the proposed collective bargaining agreement to cover the City of Waterbury Police Department and its union, the Brass City Local. Uh, Connecticut Alliance of City Police for the period covering July 1, 2017 through June 30th, 2022. It's a five-year uh, agreement that's been arrived at. And, and as the mayor alluded to, this was arrived at by agreement, which is the first time in uh, many go-rounds that a collective bargaining agreement with respect to the police has been negotiated rather than been imposed through arbitration. Um, let me run through the economic highlights quickly with you. It's a five-year agreement. Very important is year one of the agreement, which is behind us. It had a 0% uh, general wage increase for the department, so there is no retroactive component uh, payable for fiscal year 2018. For the current fiscal year, there is a two and a quarter percent increase. The uh, general wage increase would be retroactive to July 1st, but it would not have a retroactive component with respect to any extra duty pay. Uh, year three would have a general wage increase of two and a half percent, year four, two and a half percent, and the final year, a two percent. Uh, general wage increase. So over the five-year period, the wage increase is a total of nine and a quarter percent, which averages out to 1.85 percent annually. To give this a little context, the uh, last contract, which was imposed by the arbitration panel, had a 13.8 percent wage increase over, uh, again, a five-year period. Uh, so that was uh, 2.76 annually. Uh, statewide, uh, Waterbury is really the only municipality reporting wage freezes. So we, we've got another wage freeze with the police department for, in this case, the prior fiscal year. Uh, statewide, for the current fiscal year, the average general wage increase is being reported at 2.28 percent or at 2.25 for the 20 
2020 fiscal year, the statewide average is 2.43. We're at 2.5. There's no data available for fiscal year 21 or 22 on a state basis yet. Um, for fiscal year 2018, statewide, the general wage increase was recorded at 2.33 percent, which is compared to our wage freeze for that year. Uh, we also uh, made inroads in changing the health prescription uh, drug and dental plans with respect to the police. We are instituting a high deductible health plan which with an HSA component. Um, it will initially encompass 33 new hires, 32, excuse me, new hires um, who commenced work after July 1, 2018. Uh, they, this is the only plan open to them. It is open on a voluntary basis to other officers, um, and we think that there should be a, a real migration into this plan because for younger officers, it, it's a better deal than the existing uh, OPE or OPS plans. The employee contribution for the uh, OPS and OPE plans is increasing, and, and we feel that, again, with the greater contribution required from the employees, particularly for the OPS plan, it's going to drive migration to the more cost-effective uh, plans. Uh, the city employs uh, one digital as its insurance consultant, one digital pegged the savings for fiscal year 2020, commencing July 1, 2019, when the health ch plan changes take effect, at 203737 for the year. Uh, we've extrapolated that number out over 2021 and 21 22. We expect that number to actually be ba bigger in terms of the savings. But anyway, it makes the net increase over the life of the contract in terms of dollars uh, being spent by the city, the net increase becomes 6.6%. Uh, there were very few additional changes other than what dealt with the economic issues. What we did manage to pick up was we got the uh, bulk of the changes in the 2011 pension ordinance now incorporated into the police pension plan. Um, they were highlighted in the executive summary that was uh, disseminated to you, but uh, it gets us a more favorable interest rate uh, applicable to when we have to refund pension dollars due to a departing officer, um, it gets us uh, into compliance with certain IRS provisions uh, that we needed to build in. Um, and importantly, and aside from the pension ordinance, we are able to now move to retire a disabled police officer after 18 months of disability. Under the current contract language, we had to wait 24 months before we could actively move to ascertain whether that officer would come back and would be appropriate to retire. So we, we've picked up six months to the city's favor there. Um, that's pretty much a summary of everything. The union ratified the agreement. Uh, by a majority vote on October 30th of 2018. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Yes, sir. Are there any questions? Alderman Sherman. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, in reference to the, the medical plans, it, uh, the OPE and the o OPS plans available to current officers before July of 2018. Yes. Sir. It says that um, plans will be closed following the next open enrollment. Does that mean those plans stop being available to the officers, or are, are those plans available to the officers until the, for the term of the contract? They're available for the term of the contract. No new officers can get in. If you're in the OPS plan, you can move to the OPE plan or vice versa. It will cost you more money to do those things. Um, if you move from either the OPE or OPS plans to the H HDHP plan, then that's it. You're going to be in the HDHP plan for the rest of your career as long as that's the governing plan. 
and you may not be able to answer this question, maybe Michael Blank, have, has the city seen the um, return on moving up to the HSA plan um, that we expected throughout the city? I believe so, but I'll defer to Mike. We have, um, the short answer is yes from the standpoint that, you know, unfortunately in the industry as a whole, the growth year over year is substantial on a percentage basis and um, there's without a doubt on our end that we believe the the migration over to the high deductible health plan for now the vast majority of the employees for the city of Waterbury is beneficial from the standpoint of controlling the growth year over year. Um, our, our renewals, if you will, uh, putting it in the framework of, of that context are, are good year over year compared to what is being seen industry wide. Thank you. Will we provide a portion of their deductible like we did with the other uh, city employees? Uh, we will. Uh, based on the, the terms for the duration of this contract, uh, we will be funding uh, the deductible at 50 percent. Is that for the, the entire term of the contract? Yes. Okay. So it'll be for uh, 2020, 2021, and 2022 for three years. Thank you very much, gentlemen, both of you. And the deductible is 2000 4000 Further questions? Hearing none, then is there a motion with respect to the contract? Motion approved. Second. Second. Motion made by Alderman Brunelli, seconded by Alderman Napoli. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The motion carries unanimously. The contract is approved in the Committee of the Whole. Thank you. Tom, will you send Mike back in? Uh, no, Tom. Pelletier. Um, that being the same item, old business item number one was also sent to us and then it was held because the union hadn't ratified it before that last meeting. So at this point I would entertain a motion with respect to old business item number one to receive and place on file. So moved. Motion made by Alderman Brunelli, seconded by Alderman Lopez. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries the items received and placed on file. With respect to old business item number three, um, which is the proposed intermunicipal agreement with the, between the city of Waterbury and the borough of Naugatuck for sharing of taxes and development of property in Naugatuck and Waterbury, we'll call on Attorney Gary O'Connor. Good evening. Uh, my name is Gary O'Connor. I'm with the law firm of Pullman and Comley. And it's my great pleasure to be here tonight to present one of the really uh, great projects and things I've been able to come before this board uh, in a long time. Um, um, as you know, this project, um, it sits on the border of, uh, of both uh, Waterbury and Naugatuck. Um, and, and bounded by South Main Street and, and then um, Great Hill Road in Naugatuck it is at the southernmost end of it. This property is, um, has a long history. It's, uh, as the mayor alluded to, it was proposed for a casino, a dog track, a mall, and a number of other things. But unfortunately, uh, the property um, had no feasible access. Um, South Main Street uh, is one of the boundaries, but what you can't see from this, uh, this map is that the elevations are so severe that uh, uh, bringing in a drive would be uh, cost prohibitive. It was uh, 35 years ago when I first came back to the city, and it remained so. Um, and that was uh, the biggest impediment, no access. The other was the lack of um, cooperation among the two municipalities. Um, for years, uh, they weren't able to put their heads together and come up with a plan. And fortunately, that changed uh, when uh, Mayor Hess and um, Mayor O'Leary got together, and they realized that this could be um, a real win for both communities uh, uh, if we could unlock this untapped asset. So. Um, uh, with a lot of hard work from both mayor's office, um, 
WDC and the Corporation Council, uh, negotiations were had and, um, and uh, we um, drafted an intermunicipal agreement, which I'll go over with you in a minute. One of the key um, concerns, as I said, was the access. Um, so uh, the borough of Naugatuck and the city through WDC were able to buy a 10-acre um, piece that actually fronted on uh, Great Hill Road in Naugatuck. And that piece was owned by the uh, Davino family, and um, last year we were able to uh, purchase it. So now we have access uh, to the road, and uh, we're able to bring in uh, utilities. Um, the next thing we uh, did is go to uh, uh, the state of Connecticut and seek funding. Uh, and uh, my loan and McGroom put together a, uh, a cost estimate um, and came up with two plans, which I'll show you. And um, the state of Connecticut awarded us uh, $2.8 million, which will cover um, all the costs of, of the project. Um, uh, as you can see, that um, the piece is consistent with our conservation and development plan. Um, it, it um, you know, was designated for uh, an industrial use. Um, it's uh, approximately 150 acres. It's actually a little more, I think about 156, uh, 50 of which uh, is in uh, the borough of Naugatuck, if you include the 10-acre piece that uh, we recently purchased. Um, uh, right now, the developable property is, is really equal in both communities. Uh, although the city has 105 uh, acres um, uh, within the city of Waterbury boundary, a lot of that is just uh, cliff and uh, completely undevelopable. So um, it, it worked out nicely in, in the fact that uh, the developable um, portions of the property uh, are equally divided between the two municipalities. Um, uh, the utilities uh, can be accessed through Great Hill Road in Naugatuck, and that's, uh, that's part of the agreement, which I'll go over with you. Um, the project generally, uh, WDC will be the project manager for the city, uh, pursuant to a project authorization letter that's in place. Uh, and the city, uh, through WDC, is solely responsible for the project plan um, and construction. Um, we felt that there couldn't be two uh, chefs in the kitchen, um, and um, since the city owned the property, and it's really a city project, um, that they should uh, be in full control and um, have responsibility for designing the plan and overseeing the construction. Um, uh, they're also responsible for the funding, but uh, fortunately, as I said, we were able to receive uh, a $2.8 million funding grant uh, from the state of Connecticut, which will cover the cost. Um, uh, we did include a provision in the intermunicipal agreement that in the event the city didn't get funding, um, the city could terminate the, the agreement. Uh, part of the feature of this intermunicipal agreement is that there will be a tax sharing agreement. And uh, the taxes will be shared equally uh, between the two municipalities. Um, um, as I said, it worked out nicely since the development of the property was approximately equal. Um, and the city is benefiting uh, from the borough of Naugatuck because we now are getting access through the borough of Naugatuck for the project. And um, if I go back to the, uh, one of the maps, um, I don't know if you, you can see it, but the river section of, um, well, down to South Main Street um, at the interchange of Route 8. There's both a, um, a, you know, entrance and exit, a northbound and southbound. I mean, so it's ideal for a, a large distribution center because virtually right down at the bottom of the hill on a very good road, by the way, um, in the borough of Naugatuck, um, there's access to the highway. It's also in close proximity uh, to the, uh, the uh, rail line. And um, currently there are, there are plans 
uh, to put an intermodal um, a freight line um, in, the, in the borough of Naugatuck down by the old Uniroyal parcel. So there's a lot of positives which we uh, believe will make this very attractive to um, a large um, company that uh, needs uh, a mega distribution center of over 800,000 square feet. Um, and the property is owned uh, IP. Uh, uh, WDC secured uh, that zone change earlier this year. And um, let me just get to another map. There are two concepts here, uh, as the mayor indicated. One is a one large parcel um, uh, that uh, can fit 800 to 850,000 square feet. Um, and those uh, sites are hard to come by in the Northeast, uh, especially sites that are close to um, the highway and close to rail. So uh, we really believe that this um, site is a valuable piece of property uh, for that type of distribution center. The other alternative was to uh, place uh, nine in industrial uh, lots. Uh, on the parcel, which is also a great project. Um, but our first choice um, is the uh, first option I showed you. Um, uh, the, in fact, uh, the first parcel, uh, actually the cost is cheaper. It's uh, because you don't have to put in uh, an extensive um, uh, roadway. Um, the real cost is associated with leveling the parcel. So I think the, the difference in cost uh, between this nine-acre uh, subdivision with the extensive road and the, uh, the, the one-lot uh, parcel, the difference is a um, million dollars. This would be $1.8 million. The other would be $2.8 million. Um, and, you know, uh, um, John Malone and I were trying to estimate what the cost of a center like this would be, uh, you know, an 800, 850,000 square foot distribution center. Uh, and we believe that when it's constructed, I mean, between real and personal property, it could easily uh, be valued uh, at over $150 million. Um, and so this is a real tax boon um, uh, to not only the city of Waterbury, but the borough of Naugatuck. Um, we've also tried to um, you know, um, make sure that there was a sufficient, that's, a, that's actually a very significant buffer, 250-foot uh, um, buffer, um, uh, which is wooded, uh, to screen the project from, uh, uh, from any of the neighborhoods. As part of the project, as I mentioned, there's an assistance agreement uh, with the state of Connecticut. Now, that agreement is between DECD and WDC, the money goes to WDC as project manager, um, and it's through the uh, Urban Act uh, funds. And the funds are for site development and uh, infrastructure improvements. Uh, and the way the application went into DCD went in with the two options. So we have the flexibility of developing um, either option. Uh, um, as part of the um, assistance agreement, and this is typical of every DECD uh, grant and loan, um, whether it's a, a, a large giant grant like this or a small uh, business loan, um, the DECD requires um, a um, negative pledge, which is a document just that says that you're not going to sell this property or, or put a mortgage on it or lien it until after you've completed the project. And essentially, the project requirements are, you know, uh, depending on the option. If it's option one, it's to extend the utilities, uh, put in a small road spur, um, and level the site. Um, if it's option two, it's to put the more extensive road and utilities in. Um, this, the, section, the second document that is required is a, a use uh, restriction. And the use is that for 10 years, it can only be used for commercial or industrial uses. Well, and that's all it's going to be used for anyway. And that, that's what um, 
what it's owned for. And I, I just raise those, um, uh, uh, bring those to your attention because of the city, even though it's not uh, the signer of the assistance agreement, because it will own the property, will have to, have to grant the uh, negative pledge and use restriction. Um, as far as the intermunicipal uh, agreement is concerned, I think you've all had copies of it. Uh, we tried to do it, uh, um, I guess, in the spirit of cooperation uh, with the city of Waterbury really having control over the project. Um, you know, there are a lot of references to us um, uh, getting comment from uh, the borough of Naugatuck, but at the end of the day, the city is responsible for the plan and the development and the marketing of the project. Um, uh, the city will also keep all um, sales proceeds uh, since they own the property. Um, we thought it was fair that uh, we would uh, keep 100% of any sales proceeds, uh, which could be significant. Um, the borough and the city uh, have ag agreed, as I said before, uh, to split the uh, personal and real property taxes generated from the site. And each um, party is responsible for the maintenance of whatever part of the roadway um, and, and utilities are within their city limits. Um, in this case, uh, I think, it's, you know, it, depending on the site, there's virtually uh, very little if it's the first option and obviously a lot more responsibility for the city if it's the second option. Um, the, one, the one thing that um, we thought made more practical <coughs> sense is the borough is going to be responsible for snow plowing. If they got to do part of the road, they might as well do the whole thing since they're there. Um, let's see. Um, and because um, there is a tax uh, sharing component uh, in the agreement, we had to hold uh, a public hearing. Uh, pursuant to General Statute 7-148BB. And, and that basically provided that if you're going to do a tax sharing agreement, you have to have a public hearing and, um, you know, allow the public to speak. Um, and just uh, to address any concern you might have, th this project has been extensively publicized. There have been eight uh, notice public meetings. Um, uh, conducted in Waterbury over the last 16 months. Um, uh, there's been five in Naugatuck, um, and we've had one state meeting on this. It's been covered in the local newspapers and on WATR. There's also been uh, environmental wetlands and ecological studies, which have all uh, been good. I mean, surprisingly, for such a big piece, there's, um, there's not uh, that much wetlands on this property, and it seems to be located in areas on the periphery that will not impact development. Um, finally, the borough of Naugatuck has already um, gotten all their approvals, um, and uh, their last approval um, before the uh, Board of Burgesses came October 22nd of this year, and they're ready to go. So. Um, that concludes my uh, presentation. I think that, um, you know, a lot of hard work, as I said, went into this. Uh, we'd like to get this uh, project um, closed and the grant closed before the end of the year and change of administrations. And so uh, we'd, uh, if you're so inclined, ask for your approval tonight. Um, and I've provided uh, uh, Chairman Penaruski with a copy of the um, of the resolution. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to ask, answer them right now. Any questions, sure. Alderman Sherman? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, will the city be providing water and sewer services for these one facility or nine facilities? What? Um, you know, that, that's still being worked out. I think our, uh, and, th and don't hold me to this, I think that we will be providing um, uh, sanitary sewer and, and the water uh, may be coming from the Connecticut Water Company. Um, you know, it depends on ultimately what, what the, the elevation will be for um, the project. Uh, and um, uh, charges for sanitary sewer and water 
are separate from the tax sharing agreement. So those will go to um, whatever community or private company, in the case of Connecticut Water, is providing the service. Now, is the city going to build this facility or facilities, or will the, uh, the private contractor build the facility? Uh, the, the pr a private uh, developer will build it. Uh, what the city's responsibility will be um, is to bring in the improvements, bring in the road. If it's one large parcel, um, to, to level it so it's in basically shovel-ready condition. And, um, and that will make it really attractive uh, to um, a company because, or a developer, because they want, when they make a decision, they don't want to have to wait years for the excavation to be done to bring it down to grade. So, um, so that's where I think the city, that's at the level the city will take it uh, to. And what happens a lot of times is these large companies um, that put up distribution centers don't actually want to get into the development business. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll have a developer build it and they'll do a long-term lease with them. So that may be the case here. Okay, thank you very much. Further questions? Alderman Matthews. If we decide to um, approve this, how soon will you guys start marketing the property for the industrial park? Whether it be one person or nine different individuals. Immediately. Uh, you, you know, it's a, uh, and, and I, I, I shouldn't speak for WDC, but um, I think that we really have to make a determination. Well, first we have to close on the, the grant. And, um, and then we have to make the determination uh, which way we're going. So I, I think that it would be marketed and um, we would entertain uh, proposals, I, I think uh, numerous proposals, but obviously the ones that I think um, uh, will have uh, be looked at more favorably are those proposals to, um, to come in and purchase and develop uh, the property um, for some large um, distribution facility um, or, you know, a large industrial center. Um, and I think it's, it'll depend on how many jobs will be created, how much they're willing to pay, things, things like that will all be put in the equation. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Further questions? Hearing none, so um, there is a, a resolution and it's particular, so I'm gonna go through it very quickly and then we'll have um, a motion with respect to that. It's a resolution of the Board of Aldermen for the city approving the intermunicipal agreement between the City of Waterbury and the Borough of Naugatuck for the sharing of taxes and the development of properties in Naugatuck and Waterbury and authorize the mayor or his designee to execute the same. Whereas the Board of Aldermen has reviewed a proposed intermunicipal agreement between the City of Waterbury and the Borough of Naugatuck for the sharing of taxes and the development of properties located in the City of Waterbury and the Borough of Naugatuck. Whereas the intermunicipal agreement contains provisions for the development of an interest in real property owned by the City of Waterbury as described in the intermunicipal agreement, collectively the properties, whereas the State of Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development is prepared to provide a $2,800,000 Urban Act grant to fund infrastructure improvements required for the development of the properties, and whereas DECD requires that a negative pledge be recorded that the city not mortgage or create a lien or security interest in the properties or lease or transfer the properties until such time as WDC and the city have fulfilled the obligations in the grant assistance agreement, whereas DECD requires that a use restriction be recorded which requires the properties only be used for industrial commercial purposes for 10 years, and whereas the City Plan Commission of the City of Waterbury on October 10, 2018 approved a resolution recommending approval of proposed development pursuant to Connecticut General Statute Section 8-24, whereas the Board of Aldermen received written correspondence on October 12, 2018 from the City Plan Commission containing a report regarding a resolution made by the Planning Commission pursuant to Connecticut General Statute Section 8-24 whereas the Board of Aldermen held a duly noticed public hearing on November 19, 2018, in accord with the local protocols as described in Connecticut General Statute Section 7-184BB with regard to the tax sharing agreement component located in Article 9 of the Intermunicipal Agreement. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Aldermen hereby approves the intermunicipal agreement between the City of Waterbury and the Borough of Naugatuck for the development of the properties and be it further resolved that the Board of Aldermen hereby approves the specific provisions contained in Article 9 of the Intermunicipal Agreement regarding tax sharing between the City of Waterbury, Borough of Naugatuck, 
be it further resolved that the Board of Aldermen hereby approves a negative pledge and agreement and the declaration of restrictive use covenant and the recording of the negative pledge and the use restriction on the land records and be it further resolved that the mayor on behalf of the city of Waterbury is authorized to execute the intermunicipal agreement, the negative pledge and agreement, the declaration of restrictive use covenant and all other documents, instruments and certificates contemplated by said agreements and declaration or as are necessary and appropriate to carry out the purpose and intent of the foregoing resolutions and be it further resolved that the mayor of the city of Waterbury with the consent of the corporation council may make minor revisions to the intermunicipal agreement, the negative pledge and agreement and the declaration of restrictive use covenant and be it further resolved that the mayor of the city of Waterbury has full authority to do all other actions necessary to effectuate the intermunicipal agreement, the negative pledge and agreement and the declaration of restricted use covenant. Is there a motion? <laughs> Can you repeat that whole thing? <laughs> I could, but I won't. Uh, Mr. President, motion to approve all business number three. Second. Motion made by Alderman Bernelli and seconded by Alderman Lopez. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote would be to approve the resolution as I've just read it. A no vote would be to disapprove it. Um, it's set up to do a roll call vote, so let's do a roll call vote just to make sure the state's happy. <clears throat> Alderman Mernali. Yes. Alderman Cavallo. Yes. Alderman D.G. Ovin Carlo. Yes. Alderman Dorso. Yes. Alderman Giacomi. Yes. Alderman Kula. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Matthews. Yes. Alderman Martinez McCarthy. Yes. Alderman Napoli. Yes. Alderman Nujane. Yes. Alderman Sherman. Yes. Alderman Belinda Weaver. Yes. Alderman Pernaruski. Yes. 14 yes. The motion carries. The resolution is approved and the project is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with that, I would entertain a motion that we come out of Committee of the Whole and return to the regular order of business. So moved. Second. Motion having been made by Alderman Bernelli, seconded by Alderman Lopez. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. We're back to the regular order of business. Um, we'll take these up with the consent calendar. Uh, and with that, we will re uh, recess into our committees. Uh, we'll begin with uh, finance and then go to intergovernmental. We'll do both of them out here tonight because there's not that much to do. Thank you. Call the uh, Finance Committee meeting to order. Item number eight. Your Finance Committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Alderman approve administrative service agreement with Yale New Haven Health System Corporation for July 1st, 2018 to June 30th, 2019 for emergency preparedness and disaster response with funding administered by the Yale New Haven Health System Corp in the amount of $75,169 in quarterly payments made in response to financial reports and has no funding matching requirements from the city as submitted by Cynthia Vitone, Assistant Director, Department of Public Health. Motion to approve item number eight. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item number nine, your finance committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve CDBG funded assistance contracts with Greater Waterbury Interfaith Ministries Incorporated in the amount of $51,062, Manufacturing Alliance Service Corp in the amount of $51,350, and the ESG funded assistance, St. Vincent de Paul. Mission of Waterbury Incorporated in the amount of $93,775 as submitted by Diane C. Tulin, Housing and Community Planning Program Director, Office of Community Development. Yeah. Yes. Uh, motion to approve item number nine. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? 
Hearing no discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 12, your finance committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve an agreement with Eagle Environmental Services in the amount of $225,000 for the contract period of 11-20-2018 to 11-11-2020, funded provided by a $2,900,000 grant from HUD to be used for lead remediation as submitted by Francis Ford, Program Manager, Healthy Homes Department of Public Health. Motion to approve item number 12. I have a motion and a second in discussion. Hearing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Old business, uh, num item number two, requesting an abatement of property taxes and interest due the city on account of her inability to pay due to her disability, uh, submitted by Alexi Serrano, 42 Pine Street, Waterbury. Thank you. Uh, just, Mr. Um, Chairman, there's a letter, and it's, it's getting passed around now. Uh, in response to our request, the Corporation Council has written a letter, basically opining, I think, what we all knew, which is that we don't have the authority to do what's requested. So what I would ask um, uh, is that the committee recommend that the item be received and placed on file and that we instruct the, um, the city's clerk, city clerk's office to send this letter to the uh, person who sent in the request. So thank you. Th thank you. Can I get a motion to uh, receive and place on file old business item number two? Motion to receive and place on file old business item number two. Discussion? No discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Item is received and placed on file. Standing. Your Finance Committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve and authorize the Director of Finance to make refunds to taxpayers representing overpayments of tax bills in the amount of $23,183.39 submitted by Revenue Collection Manager Frank A. Caruso. Motion to approve. <coughs> I have a motion and a second discussion. Hearing no discussion, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Okay, that ends our uh, business for tonight's Finance Committee meeting. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. We are adjourned. All right, I'd like to call into order the Intergovernmental Committee meeting scheduled for November 19, 2018. Our first item on the agenda is item number five. Your Intergovernmental Committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approves an amendment, amendment number one, to the agreement with Adelbrook Incorporated, increasing the contract by $335,000 to $1,013,135 to cover tuition costs for additional students. 
as submitted by Carrie A. Swain, Clerk, Board of Education. Alderman Napoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Motion to approve item number five. Second. I have a motion to approve item number five, and it has been seconded. Any discussion? Uh, Ms. Baldwin, just two quick questions for you. Sure. I uh, just want to make sure that this actually was approved by the Board of Ed uh, at the November 14th meeting. It was. Has the tax clearing been obtained? It has. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Item number five carries. Next item on the agenda, item number six. Your Intergovernmental Committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approves an agreement with Hope Academy of Milford Incorporated doing business as Hope Academy from July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019 to provide educational services for students with disabilities in the not to exceed amount of $96,500 as submitted by Kerry A. Swain, Clerk, Board of Education. Alderman Napoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Motion that we approve item number six. Second. I have a motion to approve item number six, which has been seconded. Any discussion? Quick question on my behalf. I'm assuming this is just for one child, right? It is. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item number six carries. Next item on the agenda, item number seven, your intergovernmental committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approves an agreement with Connecticut Institute for the Blind Incorporated doing business as Oak Hill from July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2021 with a two-year option to extend the contract. This is to provide educational services for students with disabilities in the not to exceed amount of $523,392 as submitted by Carrie A. Swain, Clerk, Board of Education. Alderman Napoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Motion that the board approve item number seven. Second. I have a motion to approve item number seven, which has been seconded. Any discussion? <laughs> Alderman Matthews. One question. How many um, students will this take two, care of? Two students. Two right. students? Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I would entertain the motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you. And with that, we'll return to the regular order of business. The following items are on the consent calendar. Item number one is receive and place on file. Item two is receive and place on file. Item three is receive and place on file. Item four is receive and place on file. Item five is to approve an amendment number one to the agreement with Adelbrook Incorporated to increase the contract by $335,000 to cover tuition costs for additional students. Item number six is on consent to approve an agreement with Hope Academy to provide educational services for students with disabilities in the not to exceed amount of $96,500. Item seven is on consent to approve an agreement with the Connecticut Institute for the Blind doing business as Oak Hill with a two-year option to extend the contract to provide educational services for students with disabilities in the not to exceed amount of $523,392. Item number eight is on consent to approve an administrative service agreement with the Yale New Haven Health System Corporation 
for emergency preparedness and disaster response, funding administered by Yale New Haven Health System Corporation in the amount of $75,169 with no funding or matching requirements from the city. Item 9 is on consent to approve contracts with CD CDBG funded assistance to Greater Water Bray Interfaith Ministries in the amount of $51,062, to the Manufacturing Alliance Service Corporation in the amount of $51,350, and to St. Vincent de Paul Mission of Waterbury in the amount of $19,272. Item number 11 is... $93,775. Okay. Okay. The record will reflect that. Item number 11 is a receiving place on file. Item number 12 is on consent to approve the Eagle Environmental Professional Services Agreement in the amount of $225,000 for the period of November 2018 through November 11, uh, 2020, and funding provided by a $2.9 million grant from HUD. The lead remediation. Old business item number one is on consent to receive in place on file. Old business item number two is on consent to receive in place on file and to have the uh, city clerk's office send the opinion of the corporation council to, Ms., uh, to Alexi Serrano with respect to the fact that this board has no um, authorization or jurisdiction to abate the property taxes as requested. And item number three, old business, is on consent to approve the intermunicipal agreement with the city of Waterbury and the borough of Naugatuck for the sharing of taxes and development of properties in Naugatuck and Waterbury in accordance with the resolution approved by the Committee of the Whole. Are there any additions or deletions to the consent calendar? Motion approved. The consent calendar is read. Second. Second. Motion made by Alderman Bernelli, seconded by Alderman Napoli. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. With respect to new business item number 10, your Committee of the Whole respectfully recommends that this, uh, that this board approve the Waterbury Police Department Brass City Local Connecticut Alliance of City Police Collective Bargaining Agreement for the period of 2017 through 2022. With respect to this item, the record will reflect that Alderman D. Van Carlo is recusing himself. That having been said, is there a motion with respect to new business item number 10? So moved. Second. Motion to approve made by Alderman Bernelli. Seconded by Alderman Lopez. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries unanimously, except the record will reflect that Alderman D.G. Van Carlo has recused himself. With respect to standing committees, the chair would recognize Alderman D.G. Van Carlo as chair of the Finance Committee. Mr. President, your Finance Committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve and authorize the Director of Finance to make refunds to taxpayers representing overpayments of tax bills in the amount of 23000 $183.39, submitted by Revenue Collection Manager Frank A. Caruso. So moved. Motion having been made by Alderman Martinez McCarthy and seconded by Alderman Kula. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries. The refunds are approved. Um, anything else to come before the board? With that, I would wish you all a very happy and safe uh, Thanksgiving. We'll see you all in December. Alderman Nujame. Mr. President, thank you. I um, just want to let the public know that District 4 is having the Meet Your Alderman tomorrow, 6 to 7, at the East Mountain Golf Club. Thank you. All right, with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion having been made and seconded by Alderman Lopez. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Have a great Thanksgiving.